Delighted to at last meet with you, Major Rand. I hope you are fully recovered from your journey. I believe Klisman has explored with you how we might collaborate. He has indicated your support for our struggle. Good. Good. Come on. That's a clip from a new drama documentary, The Enigma of Frank Ryan, which was screened yesterday at the Jemison International Dublin Film Festival. It's due to be screened again next Sunday at the Irish Film Institute. Republican socialist Frank Ryan is probably better known for the circumstances of his death than for the many significant achievements of his life. An IRA militant during the Civil War, he later fell out with the organisation and its leaders, Sean Russell and Moss Toomey, as he moved to the left, inspired by men like Pather O'Donnell. The controversy surrounding him relates to his activities after a distinguished service on behalf of the Republican government in the Spanish Civil War. He spent his last years in Nazi Germany, making one abortive attempt to return to Ireland for an ill-defined purpose on board a German U-boat with his former adversary, Sean Russell. The enigma of Frank Ryan was made by filmmaker Des Leslie Bell. And Des has been telling me about his subjects, including his uneasy relationship with the Republican movement and his establishment of the Republican Congress. Ironically, sort of, Ryan never really wanted any uh, break from the broader Republican movement. Uh, what he wanted to do was to bring the Republican movement with him around the social agenda that Republican Congress, as he saw it, the more advanced uh, element of the Republican movement had developed. He didn't want to split, he didn't want a separate party. The Congress was really to set up an agenda for the broader movement, but the broader movement wasn't interested. And uh, there were many elements within Republican Congress who were quite clearly wishing to form a fully-fledged communist or, or socialist party. One of the very interesting things I think about Ryan is that he forged relationships with Northern Protestants, with Northern Protestant uh, socialists and Northern Protestant Republicans. Indeed, um, he took a very generous attitude towards the North, uh, sometimes you might even say a naive attitude. He just naturally assumed, as many Republicans did at the time, that partition was a temporary inconvenience that would be solved and therefore it was possible to build organisations on a 32-county basis there was a body of advanced political opinion amongst working class Protestants in the North at the time and he saw that as an, an, very important to recruit. Um, again, he was really visiting the ground that Connolly had visited you know, 20 years earlier um, and he was quite successful uh, uh, in recruiting you know, with, with people like George Gilmore, of course, was from the North, who was also involved in Republic, Republican Congress. They were quite successful, uh, but there was opposition on occasions you know, from the IRA leadership who were more focused on uh, the struggle in the south of Ireland. In the film, you depict a standoff between Ryan's supporters and uh, IRA supporters at the annual Wolf Tone commemoration in Bowdenstown. So, it, in a sense, that's where that sort of conflict that you've just been talking about came out in the open, wasn't it? It came out in the open, and obviously in filmic terms, that gives you an opportunity to dramatise and give it a dramatic effect. Like a lot of things in Irish politics, there was a bit of pantomime about it, as well as a serious political conflict. Ryan and the delegation from the North arrived. There was a dispute over who had the right to fly banners of various sorts, of the sort that takes place in Irish politics. And uh, a standoff occurred with this sort of uh, classic Donnybrook, as we call it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Wolf Tone is turning in his grave. And what would Ryan's relationship with Sean Russell, who was the, 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 the head of the IRA at that stage, at that point, what would his relationship have been with Russell? Well, it would appear to have deteriorated um, as Republican Congress gets going and as it starts to uh, get some momentum in attracting adherents both north and south. It starts to represent you know, an organisational challenge uh, to uh, Sean Russell and to Moss Tomey, who at various times are leading the IRA. The curious thing again is that Ryan wants to remain within the family, within the fold, but the family don't want him really. <laughs> So he's in considerable tension, and in the film we make that one of the narrative strands that runs through the film because the you know, the Russell and Ryan come together at various points. They come together initially when the Republican Congress has started. They come together when um, in this con conflict in Bodenstown, and then most famously they mm -hmm. come together when they are both find themselves in Berlin, uh, brought there separately under Nazi support. We'll come to Berlin in a moment because obviously that's crucial in Ryan's story, but also crucial is his involvement in the Spanish Civil War. How did he become involved in the war? 
Well, he was already involved in Ireland in various anti-fascist activities in the context of the blue shirts emerging and O'Duffy's uh, activities, um, and he already was involved in street protests. When the insurrection against the elected Republican government took place, led by Franco and his nationalists, there were many forces in Ireland on the left who felt that support, as there was right across Europe, that the Republic had to be defended. One particular instance that must have goaded him towards the decision to take action would the fact be the fact that uh, Inno Duffy raised a brigade uh, to fight on the Franco side, and uh, clearly that would have been a motivating force. So he was really part of a more general wave of support which was running through the left uh, in Ireland, in Britain and across Europe, people, people rallying to the defence of the Republic in the context of the Franco attack on it. There are other sort of motives that we explore in the film that maybe he was you know, seeking a better class revolution in Spain, <laughs> a sunnier climb. <laughs> I mean, he had been politically fairly unsuccessful. Congress had had really failed by the time that the Spanish Civil War had 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 broken out, and he was a bit in the political wilderness. So, to some extent, um, there's an element, as there always is in these situations of adventurism, that uh, you know he saw political conflict that was more black and white than the than the, than the shades of grey that existed in Ireland, and one where he could make perhaps a real difference, and where he would also be recognised as he was, and he was given the rank of major. He was given significant authority over the Irish brigade that was raised there. So he was able to assume maybe the sort of position that was not available to him in Ireland and bring his uh, unique qualities as a leader to bear there. Now, he saw a lot of action and he is eventually captured. He ends up in Burgos prison from which he, quote unquote, escapes. What actually happened there? <clears throat> what we know is that representations were made by the Irish government for his release through the Irish consul in Madrid, Leopold Kearney. Uh, we know that uh, simultaneously representations were made by the German military intelligence, Abwehrswey, in part because uh, Helmut Klissmann, um, a young German uh, officer serving for Abwehr who had known Ryan, no, no, known him well and was married to an Irish woman, had brought the case to the attention of Admiral Canaris, who was the head of Abwehr's Y military intelligence, and uh, they had acted with the support of the German uh, foreign ministry to put pressure on Franco for the Rhine release. Franco was reluctant to actually either grant a pardon or an official release, an effort, and a deal appears to be done where a sort of escape would be manufactured, uh, whereby um, the Abwehr officers, together with Spanish personnel, would smuggle him out of the jail and transport him initially to Paris and then subsequently to Berlin. Who exactly were the main players in this is very hard to establish. For instance, John Russell seems to, at the time, to have claimed some uh, role in this, in bringing the Ryan case to the attention of Abwehr German military intelligence. But it appears to be that these relationships that he had forged in Ireland with a whole series of uh, young German intellectuals who were studying in Ireland and then became at the core of the military intelligence, Irish office effectively. These were the relationships that, in, that meant that the Ryan case came to the attention of somebody like uh, Colonel Wiesemeyer, who was Hitler's coup d'etat specialist and who, together with Canaris, made the decision undoubtedly to try and get Ryan out of prison, get him to Berlin and get him involved in some form of collaborative activity in the context of events in 1940 when of course uh, Germany was really breathing down the neck of Britain and looking to Ireland as a potential ally or at least platform for attacks on Britain. Colonel Wiesemeyer, perhaps you could be more specific as to what form this collaboration might take. Of course here I am. I know you are a man of action. And before I praise you of our plans, there's someone here I'd like you to meet. I believe you two gentlemen are acquainted. Russell. General Sean Russell. Good to see you. The lads are delighted you finally made it out of Spain. Now, he goes to Berlin. He's reunited with Sean Russell, with whom, as you've said, he had largely an adversarial relationship over the previous number of years. What sort of a relationship, then, did they have in Berlin and what happened between the two of them subsequently, which ended up in the death of Russell? Well, it appears that Wiesenmeyer, uh, Colonel Wiesenmeyer, who 
orchestrated the meeting together of Russell and Ryan uh, in his office in Berlin, was worried that it might end up as a, a punch-up. So well-known was it, the animosity between the two. But when they actually met, the old animosities appeared to have been dropped, where there was the sense of two Irishmen together in a particular pickle in Berlin. But they appeared to, from the outset, uh, cooperated enthusiastically, although it would be, appear to be the case that Russell didn't fully brief Ryan and was much more integrated into the German plans to land agents back in Ireland. It would appear that sort of Ryan really was, he'd just been sprung out of prison, he was in poor health, possibly mental health as well as physical health. He'd very much trusted Klisman, who had met him and looked after him in Paris. Klisman then had then driven him together with another somebody, another scholar that he'd known from Dublin, Ewap Hoven, had driven him to Berlin. And he was a trusting sort to Ryan. Uh, he trusted Russell, he trusted the two Germans, and he perhaps, perhaps didn't ask some of the questions that he might have asked about the motives of Abfair. We live in a changed world. The Germans can help us. They're fascists! Sean? He was offered and accepted eventually a place on the U-boat that had been organised by Canaris to transport Russell back to Ireland. This will be our route. We'll head out of Friesland under the British blockade, south through the English Channel and west to Ireland. We will drop you here on the Dingle Peninsula. They set off on the journey. Russell, who had for some period of time been suffering from some sort of stomach ulcer, has an attack, a serious attack on the boat. His health declines. Ryan tries to get the U-boat commander to put into Lorient for medical assistance. The U-boat commander won't do this. And Russell eventually dies at sea. It is reputed in the arms of Frank Ryan. Ryan's then stuck in a terrible dilemma. He doesn't know what the nature of the mission is. Um, he doesn't know whether to continue with it, whether to return to Berlin, what uh, awaits him if he lands in Ireland, almost certainly imprisonment, as it will be perceived as being a sort of infringement of Irish neutrality, the whole German espionage activity. He doesn't know what will uh, face him when he goes back to Berlin, but there is the possibility that perhaps he can carry on some form of plenipotentiary role uh, acting for the Republican movement in negotiation with the German military intelligence authorities. So he eventually, rather reluctantly, decides to go back on the submarine and he's taken back, first of all, to Lorient and then back to Berlin. Finally, his role or what he did in Berlin during the rest of that period between uh, uh, the death of Sean Russell and his own death then of pneumonia in, in Dresden. It's hard to see somebody like Frank Ryan, a socialist, as having very much sympathy, if any, sympathy of any kind, with the Nazis. When he was there in Berlin, is it a case of the enemy of my enemy is my friend? Is that why he went back to Berlin and remained in uh, Berlin? And was that what informed his activities there? We are speculating, and I think, you know, the film when you write a script is to give uh, form to a speculation. <laughs> that's, that's all it can be, because they, the trail, the record, gets thin at this point. After 1942, with the start of the Eastern War, Operation Barbarossa, the attack on Russia, and then the failure of that uh, of that campaign, Ireland was off the agenda. So he was really redundant in many ways in relationship to Abfair activities, and he complains about being totally underemployed in Berlin and not having a real role. Many of the roles that he's offered of a more ideological sort, uh, he refuses, um, including one where he is asked to try and organise a potential brigade of formed out of prisoners of war from the British regiments of a captured of Irish extraction who indicated that they might be sympathetic to being formed into some sort of Irish brigade. Reminiscent of Casement yes, in World War One. somewhat, somewhat similarly. Um, however, when he goes to actually fly sack the camp to, uh, he's recognised by one of the prisoners and that seems to shock, cause some shock of recognition of his own situation and he feels very compromised and uh, doesn't proceed with that. We certainly portrayed him as a tormented individual. It's very hard to get the historical evidence for that but certainly towards the end of the film you know he's starting to try and ask questions about the nature of the regime about the nature of the treatment of the Jews and the camps now again there's no historical record that he raised these questions but he could not but have been concerned about this you will have heard filmmaker Des Bell talking to me about his new film, The Enigma of Frank Ryan, which was screened as part of the Dublin Film Festival last night and is to be screened again in the Irish Film Institute next Sunday.